Welcome to the CADDT Quick Training video on the Information Menu. Your Information Menu contains uh, various things, um, both graphs and, as you'll see, statuses, summaries, totals. Anything that's viewed as an informational piece that you'd like to pull off of that machine will generally be found under the Information Menu. Uh, this is one menu that does change uh, depending on which ECM you're primarily connected to. So as we stated in an early, earlier video, if you know that you're looking for something under the information menu but you can't find it, you may want to double check which ECM you're connected to and, and switch to a different ECM if needed to find that, uh, that thing that you're looking for. So we'll start stepping through all these. Uh, we'll probably cover everything in this video except for the data log and the product status report and those will both have their own separate uh, quick videos on them. So the status screen is any kind of electronic status that you can monitor on that machine. You'll see once the, the screen loads here that there are several predefined groups that contain pieces of information here uh, and you can cycle through these. The product groups have tried to um, put these into groups that make sense from a troubleshooting standpoint. You know, think about pieces of information that a user would want to see together. So you can use these predefined groups. Uh, if you find a group that you want to look at and you want more room on your screen, you can always hide the, the uh, little tree structure over there on the left hand side and then expand it if you need to. Uh, if you also need more room than that, you can always remove some of these columns. If you just right click and uncheck them, they will go away off the screen. Or you can go back to the defaults. And, excuse me, and you can see groups on um, all of the ECMs uh, that are predefined there. So you can just kind of cycle through them and, and get those statuses. Um, if you don't like the groups that are out there or you just prefer to create your own, there are two types of groups that you can create. One is called a temporary group and one is just a regular custom status group. So you can go into your group screen here and basically create your own sets. The difference between a temporary group and a full uh, custom status group is that a temporary group will only last for the um, connection that you have going. So as soon as you disconnect CAT-ET from that machine or engine, those temporary groups will go away. But once you have the group um, feature up here, you simply scroll down and if you'd like to create a temporary group, just double click on temporary group and then click new or you can change it and then um, you can basically pick any parameter out of all those ECMs that you'd like to see uh, in in this temporary group. So we'll scroll down we'll pick some out of this ECM and again this is like the toolbar where you can either double click a parameter or you can highlight it and use the left and right arrows. You can move them up and down in the in the screen there. So once you get all the ones that you uh, would like in your temporary group, go ahead and click OK. And then acknowledge it on the group screen and you'll see now you have your temporary group heading up here, which you could have renamed it to something else uh, if you wanted to. And then you have all your parameters there. Again, if you disconnect ET, this will go away. If, however, you would like to create a custom status group that will remain in your ET uh, for each you know, session, uh, if, you're, if you're a person who has certain parameters that you'd like to look at um, as soon as you get to the machine and you just want them all in a single group, you can go ahead and just create your own uh, regular custom status group here. So you can go ahead and just click New, give it a name, click OK, and again this will look just like your, your temporary group screen, but you can just pick things off of all the ECMs, click OK, and you'll see it has the name you gave it, and now it's also at the bottom of the list here um, of your custom status groups. We also have what's called the full screen option. So if you're having problems seeing your screen, or you need to leave your laptop up in the cab while you're down um, maybe wiggling some electro electrical connections seeing if it's changing any 
any grounds or any voltages, you can go into what's called full screen mode. What full screen mode does is it allows you to pick up to six parameters and then it will stop you and what it does then is if you click OK, Caddy T will take over your entire screen with these values and you know if you were connected up to a, a real machine these values would be fluctuating but you'd be able to see it more clearly uh, than having to either drag your laptop with you or have it out in the dust. So then you can hit any key on your keyboard to get out of that feature and then go back and choose uh, up to six other ones if you want to. We also have what's called the zoom in feature and that just zooms in the current group that you have on your screen and that's that's why we cut the full screen off at six because the zoom in feature gets you pretty close to the same size um, as if we added more than than six. Then you can always zoom out. If you are looking at a group on an ECM that supports the snapshot feature, you can go ahead and manually trigger one of those snapshots um, from the status screen now as opposed to going into the snapshot feature. And then lastly we have what's called the hold button and you'll see that we're on a group that has uh, a fluctuating parameter in it. In Trainer there's a few scattered here and there. Um, if you were connected to a real machine again most of these would be changing. But if you click the hold button you'll notice that your value stops and essentially it's just pausing the collection of that data so that you can look at the values that are on the screen uh, and either record those or you know use them for analysis in trying to show, troubleshoot a problem. If you want to go back to pulling the live data just click the resume button and you'll see it goes back to um, pulling that information again. Next we have what's called the ECM summary screen. For most people this is the default screen unless you've went into your preferences and changed it that pops up when you first connect with Caddy T and it's just a, basically a summary of the, the ECMs that it found on the data link and will give you some very basic pieces of information what the ECM's named, what's programmed for a serial number on that ECM, and then kind of the software information um, of what flash files on that ECM. Some of the next pieces of information are uh, either machine specific or even ECM specific. So your current totals may or may not show up under your information menu. Again, it goes back to making sure you know which, which ECM you're connected to and which ECM you need to be connected to. But your current totals generally has to do with uh, some of your fuel information here. So you can see total fuel, you know, how long it was idling, things like that. Um, we'll skip over data log. Next we have what's called real-time graphing. And this is essentially uh, the same as your status screen. But you can go through and pick um, for any ECM, pick which parameters you want to see. And again, it's going to cut you off at six. And you can save it uh, as a name if you'd like to. But then once you click OK, you'll see that the values are starting to come across the screen in graph form. Again, because we're in trainer and our values are not fluctuating, you're going to end up with some pretty boring graphs because they're all straight lines, unless you use one of the fluctuating parameters. But you can see that it will give you just basically a graphical view of that status screen. Um, if you want to remove some of the parameters from the graph, you can pull up the legend <clears throat> and remove those. You can always add them back in on the fly. If you don't like the colors of the lines, you can go into your settings and change those colors, uh, especially, you know, provide a little more contrast for um, being out working in the sun or if you're a colorblind user and have you know, trouble seeing certain colors. You can change some of those parameters. The hold button works just like it did on the status screen. So if you click hold, it's going to pause uh, pulling that data. And if you go to resume, <coughs> you'll see that there is um, a gap in the graph there. And that's where we had paused the data and it was no longer uh, recording that information. If you'd like to change which six parameters you have showing, just click your graph sets button here and then you can change you know, which ones you have going using your arrows again. Next under information we have the snapshot feature. This one is kind of hard to demonstrate in trainer, 
but again you can pick a, a predefined group here and manually trigger that snapshot when you want to. So we'll go ahead and hit the button, but because we're in the trainer mode, it's not able to trigger that because it actually saves that on the ECM. Uh, prognostics and histogram, these are available again on certain ECMs only. Uh, if you want to go into the histogram feature, simply click on it and then you can have your choice of which which of those histograms you'd like to see on the screen and then it gives you some options on there as well uh, that you can kind of change your graph around. Product status report as we mentioned we will cover in a separate module and last we have what's called syslinks and what syslinks does is basically it will take whatever's programmed into those ECMs for a product ID so in most cases it's the machine serial number except in the case of the engine ECM it's the engine serial number and it will give you a quick way to link into sys to your either your documentation or your systems and components view so if we click on the documentation you will see that it went ahead and entered our serial number and clicked on that link for us and now we can navigate down through our various um, types of documentation until we find what we're looking for so it's just kind of a quick way you know if you or it's better to just click around as opposed to trying to write down a serial number and then go over to sys and enter it. Uh, it's just a little shortcut there to help save some time. And that concludes our training on the information menu.